folks. Welcome to another edition of Luthier's Lair. And this edition is actually going to kick off a series that I've been kind of wanting to do. And the opportunity has just arisen for me to do it. Uh, this is a special one-off build series that I'm going to be doing on a project which code name is Boris. Boris. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this uh, piece has just recently been commissioned to me. So we're getting in on the ground floor here. And I'm going to try and make this series as detailed as possible since it's just a one-off. And uh, we're going to be using a mixture of techniques uh, to build this bass guitar. Uh, a lot of it's going to be by hand because it's a one-off and it's uh, it could benefit from being uh, drafted up and done on the CNC but I won't be using the CNC machine much for this build it being a one-off anyway let's go in and, and uh, let's have a look at the template for this the body of this base and you'll see why I'm pretty keen uh, to make this it should be a lot of fun uh, it's for a great customer of mine and uh, who I'll reveal towards the end of the series of course if he'll allow me to I'm sure he will uh, but let's go and take a look at what's happened so far okay righty so uh, the first thing I decided to do for this build is to not use the CNC machine to cut out the body I'm going to do that all manually which is uh, I'm used to anyway and uh, the design for this base was quite uh, clearly specified for the shape of the body uh, and actually I'll sh quickly show you the shape right now I've made a rough template of what the customer requires and uh, see, if you, see if you can guess uh, the synergy here Th the synergy right ready I'll show you it quickly and then we'll have a closer look at it it's a chin rest right yeah that's got to look familiar to some people out there it has to and uh, I'm going to lay this down. We'll have a closer look at it, okay? So, folks, this is codename Boris. And for the keen eyed ones out there, you will be able to see that this base body is kind of a, a cross between uh, an Alembic Series 1, uh, a JD. Supernatural Classic Series 1 and a JD GA24 GA standing for of course the great George Anderson who is the bass player for Shack Attack wonderful guy um, yeah as you can see the horns are kind of but they're kind of between Alembic Series 1 and uh, JD Supernatural Natural Classic Series 1 not like the GA24, but we do have this the, the body sweep here round to the tailpiece, and the tailpiece is a hybrid of the Alembic series one and the GA24. The body dimensions are slightly smaller, very slightly smaller than the Supernatural Classic series one, and this is going to be a two octave base, 34 inch scale. Okay. So I've already marked out approximately where the, the, the bridge is going to go. That's the front of the bridge. This will be the bridge pickup center line. This is the uh, neck pickup center line. And I've marked those wrong. So I'm going to remark them. Gee. What's getting on with me? Bridge. And that's neck. Okay, 
it's a bit clearer. So, and I also put in my, you know, my signature uh, neck joint shape. Because uh, the only part that's going to be cut out on CNC for this space is the neck. Uh, and, of course, the, the fingerboard. Everything else is going to be done by hand. I'm not making this into a routing template. I'm making it into a an outline template. I'm going to be making special routing templates on the CNC machine. And that's the only other use for the CNC in this. For the neck pocket and the two pickup uh, cavities. The customer uh, wants single coil lipstick pickups in, in here. I'm not sure that will give him the tonal variety he wants, so I'm going to be discussing that with him. But the, the hardware is going to be all gold, so this will be gold lipstick pickups with a wooden trim. The body wood is going to be black limber, which is a gorgeous, uh, gorgeous wood. And I had to special order in a slab of black limba that would fit this body size. Uh, so the control cavity is going to be large uh, to just just to get the weight uh, of the base down and it will be rear mounted uh, controls so that we'll not have any pick guard material on the surface of the base here. We'll have the control cover on the back. That's going to be fun. So like I said, it's going to be all gold hardware and uh, yeah the base will be a little on the heavy side but that's not a problem these bases usually are the alembic series one and the jd supernatural classic series one are historically heavy bases but that's fine so that is the basic shape the reason i'm making separate templates for the uh for hand routing and not just routing in the, the holes right now is because I want to be able to adjust things as I'm going along since this is just a one-off build. It's always good to plan things out but it's always good to have a fallback in case something uh, happens that, uh, that you haven't planned for. But we'll plan this out as well as we can, one-off, one of a kind and uh, we'll get started on it. Let's go and have a look at the parts that are going to go into this base, okay? Okay, folks, let's do a quick rundown of the components I already have for this base build. And uh, yeah, we'll start with battery box, of which there should be two. Yep, one for the preamp, one for LEDs, red LEDs in the neck, standard dot pattern LED in the neck. Talking of which, this is my standard uh, gas base uh, three band preamp. That will be the electronics, the bridge, this nice thing. Lovely, isn't it? That's the hip shot kick ass high max bridge. Uh, standard uh, fender spacing in this, just a beautiful piece of uh, engineering. I swear by these bridges, they are absolutely awesome. They really are. They're very nice. That's me just getting messaged by the customer <laughs> right now. I will quickly go through this. Uh, these are pickup rings. The Binga pickup rings that I cut actually pre-cut on the CNC machine because I do use these on the Gas Bass Falcon Series 1 uh, bass guitar and there's one of the pickups there this is the this is the bridge pickup it's overwound slightly so you get more beefier tone from the bridge and that one's the neck pickup right there I do have a spare one in here uh, this I'm going to be using my patented uh, head sleeve technology, uh, 
which allows you to switch between headed and headless, but this one's going to be headed. And you can see the headstock, actually that's another bass influence, is shaped like a Pangborn, an Ashley Pangborn bass. There you go there. Uh, tuning heads, gold as well. And I have two more of these in order. These are the control knobs with abalone top, gold as well. Spare pickup there. That's hardware for mounting the electronics. And just various pieces of hardware. I do have a spare neck plate in here, but the neck plate is going to be something really special. I have uh, specially ordered it. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun too. It's going to be gold as well, but you'll see the shape when it comes in. It's really nice. Okay, that's what I've got so far uh, in stock. I also have a neck blank in stock. Right here, piece of uh, rock maple. And that will be going on the CNC machine later today to cut out the neck. So, yeah. So, I think we're about ready to start this build. And like I said, it's always been a sort of a dream of mine to uh, build something in the mould of an Alembic or a, a JD. So, this is going to be such fun for me um, that it shouldn't really be allowed. It shouldn't. So, catch you later. So, after a couple of hours of uh, doing some drawings and then some CNC work, uh, I've come up with some uh, templates, and these templates are for the uh, control cavity. Uh, they're routing templates, and uh, of course I've also routed the panel, which will go in the top of the control cavity it's a black pearl panel mm, nice so how's this all gonna fit together well let's put this aside for just now and I'll show you and this and we'll take these away and I'll turn this around and the control panel uh, cavity is gonna go sort of something like that on the back of the base sort of angled a bit like this okay it's going to be angled because I want this downward slope of all the controls that are going to be in there right this is actually the I believe that's the interior or is it the exterior it's the exterior so what happens is first I've done an interior and an exterior template. We'll put that aside and we'll do this way. It should be this way actually. So it's going to go somewhere about there on the body, angled down like that because the controls are slanting downwards. That's the way I want them. Okay. We would route this out in the body to a depth of about 1.5 inches. The body is going to be 1.75 inches thick. Right, so we'll leave a quarter of an inch of wood for the pots and all the controls, the switches to go through. In this area. And then we'll put this template on the top of it afterwards and as you can see right there there is a one quarter inch ledge there and that is because I will go I'll use this uh, template to route point one of an inch down into this part here so that this will sit flush Sorry. Uh, yeah. That way, that way, no. Wrong way. Sorry about this, guys. <laughs> yes, indeed. It will sit like that. 
sorry. See? And then this, of course, just as you can see, it fits perfectly. And of course, it'll screw in there, 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 there. And we'll have a, a control cavity. As you can see, that fits very nicely. That's a good thing about CNC, you get maximum accuracy there. And uh, yeah, everything's looking really quite good. I could put it like this. Actually, that's, yeah, that's the way it should be, really. Like that. Let's see if I can uh, line this up for you. That way. There you go. Tails off in here at the end because that's where the jack is going to go. It's going to go around here. And this piece, this piece I'm going to use to locate the controls. So when that goes in, I've already made up this template here, which shows me the drill holes that is required. So I'll just superimpose that onto there. Give it a straight line there and put that down and we'll drill the holes where the holes are meant to go in this piece and make sure that's equidistance around there. So we'll get an absolutely perfect uh, control set every time. Every time. Every time. Ooh, there we go. And then that goes in like that. Awesome. Using, uh, of course, using the CNC machine in this fashion greatly speeds up uh, well, not only prototyping, but the actual uh, build itself. And now, if I do want to build another base like this, then I have all the templates and I'm ready to go. So yeah, looking good so far. Well, that's it for part one, folks. And who knows what's coming in part two, yes. This is a one-off build and while the design of all components is pretty solidly in my head uh, as I go along there may be some changes there may not so let's see what happens anyway thanks for watching if you uh, enjoy what I do on the channel and you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so it helps me out uh, thumbs up and uh, ring that notification bell so that you'll be informed when I do my next uploads uh, until then, as usual, stay safe, be good, I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot for watching folks, cheers, bye bye.